On this episode, we welcome Dr. Corey Schuler from MetabolicTreatmentCenter.com. What do you think it is that, that drives you to, to continue to, to want to learn and continue to want to reach out to people and, and to uh, to help people? I think that's a, a great, profound question, and uh, I kind of spend some time on that pretty frequently. Um, I, my initial thought and the, probably the best soundbite thought of it is like I, I can't stand people suffering the way they do and not find answers, but I think it's more primal than that. People oversimplify things that are complex and they overcomplicate things that are simple. And mm -hmm. I think that there is context that's lost in our current society. And I just, I'm like searching for the truth. And that sounds super cliche, but mm -hmm. I think that's right. I think it is like, I need to know what's real versus am I getting just snowballed on some of this stuff um, just to know for myself. So unfortunately or fortunately, I've dedicated my whole life to just figuring that out. That's coming up. Welcome back to the Rebel Health Drive podcast. I'm Joe Ragnola with Michael Roseline. What's up, Michael? Hey, Joe. How is it going? Going well, going well, trying to get caught up on recording intros for the 8,000 podcasts that we have uh, recorded 8, already. 8,000 podcasts. Yeah. Or 30, whichever. This is episode number 8,001. <laughs> exactly. And on today's podcast, number 8,001, we have Dr. Corey Schuler. What's up, Corey? Howdy, guys. How you doing? Doing well. What's new? What's happening? Um, well, it's, what is it? It's March 23rd, and uh, I look in out my uh, clinic window, and it's snowing. So that sucks. Ouch. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're, you're up in like the Midwest area, Chicago area? Yeah, Wisconsin, so further oh. one one block north. <laughs> I thought you were in Minnesota. I live in Minnesota, practice in Wisconsin and Minnesota, so I live on a border town. Oh. Gotcha. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, we had, we had um, I don't feel so bad. We had snow on the first day of spring here in New York, and I was like, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I don't feel so bad. I think every year you forget um, how late it'll snow, and then when it happens, you're like shocked and angry and mm -hmm. PTSD from the winter. Yes. When I moved from Chicago to Tampa in 2008, I left on April 29th, and it snowed. Uh. Like the, the day I was packing, it was snowing, and I remember being like, dude, it is April 29th. Damn. Go home, nature. You're drunk. Like, what is this? But I think that just happens. But the winter's so long that by March you're just like this can't continue. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I was in. Uh, I was. I went to uh, like college my last two years of high school, and I was coming back uh, from college to uh, to high school to like it was like homecoming or some stupid high school thing, and I was coming home, and it was like uh, it was April seventeenth. It was April seventeenth, nineteen ninety seven that dates me, I guess, um, and I'm driving home, and it's flooding. The Minnesota River has gone, has busted its banks, the, the floods, it's like flooding out everything, and it's a blizzard on the same day. Um, I had to drive 120 miles to find the next bridge that would go over that river without wow. it being flooded to go home, and I actually had, the, I think I said something similar about nature, but... <laughs> yeah. Requires expletives, so. Yeah. This is an uncensored podcast. Just oh, so okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, so we could be like, that's bullshit. <laughs> Whatever. So for folks that may not know you, just give a quick background, um, what you do, why you do it, um, and then we'll get into some more interesting stuff. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I have no. My wife has no idea what I do. She's like, sometimes you're home, sometimes you you leave for the day, sometimes you leave for like weeks on end. I have no idea what's happening. So um, you're in the CIA, is basically. What that's what saying. I was thinking. Yeah. It's funny. It's funny. The, uh, the somebody that I work with, they actually refer to me as uh, as the operative. So you're not <laughs> probably too far off. And I call her my handler. It it just works. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'm a I'm director of clinical affairs for a, a nutraceutical company um, that uh, we make and you know deliver products to physicians, healthcare professionals um, for you know therapeutic uses. And uh, that company is Integrative Therapeutics. And I run a headache practice here in Hudson, Wisconsin, Hudson Headache, and then we also have Metabolic Treatment Center, which is the functional medicine arm of that where we do more like remote consultations and all that, and then I sit at home in my pajamas and play with my dogs when I'm not doing those things. So you're not busy at all? 
Uh, I try to keep it. I try to keep it light. Yeah, <laughs> not too much going on there. So when did you? Uh, you, where, you grew up in the. You grew up in the Midwest area there. Yeah, I grew up in western Minnesota, dangerously close to South Dakota, actually. So on a farm, um, we had like 2,000 acres of uh, corn and soybeans, and so it was a grain farm. And uh, interesting that my life is where it is right now. Um, but, yeah, but regardless... You went, the, you went from the dark side to the light side, basically. Yeah, basically. or something like that. We, uh, <laughs> I, I did that, and... Uh, I met my wife while we were still in high school, and uh, she lives in the twin lived in the Twin Cities at the time. Um, we kind of we never really dated, parted ways, and all that. I went to college, she went to college, and then after college, I was like, "Hey, what are you doing?" Actually, she said, "Hey, what are you doing?" Um, and long story short, we got married, and uh, she drug me back to her hometown. Nice, awesome. So, um, growing up on a farm, like, so you you your family owned a farm, like a massive monocrop corn type of deal? Massive amounts of corn and soybeans that we would just crop rotate every other year. And you worked, you, so you grew up working on that farm? Yep, picking rocks and uh, pulling weeds and doing, you know, farmer type stuff. Wow, so were you doing like spraying the glyphosate and all that stuff too? Oh yeah, we were early adopters of genetically modified <laughs> organisms in 1994. I remember sitting in a, have I, have I not told you this story? I was sitting in like a theater of, uh, of like a Monsanto subsidiary and uh, they brought all these farmers and whoever they wanted to bring in and we watched like it was like Jurassic Park like the first Jurassic Park where they showed um, like uh, it, how they made GMOs and it was like a scientific breakthrough and, and I just sat there extremely interested like I mm -hmm. loved science I was I was a kid I was like uh, I don't know 15 16 years old so I thought it was great um, <laughs> You just don't know what you don't know. Yeah, that's really, really interesting. So you're like, this is the greatest thing ever. Did you like? And did, did you eat the corn off of, off of your farm? And no, no, no. It, it was it was field crop for. Uh, it's for like so cattle feed. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, most of the corn and soybeans. Well, the soybeans probably get processed into people food, but most of the corn grown uh, in those in the Midwest monoculture farms isn't that for feed. Yeah. Yeah. So we so, eat the animals that eat that. Right. Well, some people do. Yeah, exactly, exactly, or, or the tofu. I remember in my biology class in high school, uh, it was right around the kickoff of all of that nonsense, and it was uh, probably 97-ish, and my biology teacher, who was like a super hippie, um, played this similar video, like, a, they, I don't know, it was like Cargill or Monsanto or some companies, like, watermark all over it, and played this video for us, we thought it was super cool. Like, we didn't understand the, the implications of any of it. We're like, they can mix a tomato with a bug and make it immune to bug spray or, like, whatever the the way they explained it on a high school level. We were just like, it was. It was like what Jurassic Park. It was super yeah. cool. And we're like, can they mix, like, a bird with a pumpkin and make a pumpkin that flies? Like, that's where our <laughs> brain went with it. And then the teacher was, like, devastated and super upset that all of us were excited because she was trying to show it to us as this terrible thing. And it totally backfired, oh, and then she just, like, ended the conversation, and we went on to something else. Oh, that's funny. So you had, like, a hippie liberal teacher that was trying to... Trying to educate the uh, uh, class on the evils of g genetic modification and pesticides, and we were all, like, flying pumpkins, and, like, <laughs> we wanted to mix, like, spiders with tomatoes. I remember if that was possible. Like, we were trying to figure out all these super cool combinations. Um, flying tomato spider sounds like a horrifying experience. Yeah, but anywho, I can relate to being sat in a room and being in awe with the, yeah, yeah. the, the coolness of it. How did you, how did you get from that to this? <laughs> uh, well, uh, similar experience. Uh, high school was was awkward for me. Um, so I, I was a. Uh, I thought, well, what can I? What will I not get bored with? It's actually the the rubric that I challenge myself because I have to go to college, right? That was the the thing you do. So I have to go to college and I have to pick a major and if I pick a major before I sort of pick the college then I can find which one you know gets me the best money and is the best school for that thing and, and everybody does these sort of gymnastics and uh, I was like okay well I won't get bored with chemistry because there's a lot of elements on the periodic table. <laughs> yeah. So that's like legit um, what I did. I just picked a... one second. Um, You picked chemistry because it's chemistry. the most things. <laughs> yeah, I had the most things, and I wouldn't get bored. So, uh, and <laughs> that I found sounds, a sounds legit. Yeah, I found a school that, that that liked me for that, and I liked them too. And so I went to Indiana to school and uh, spent four good years learning sciencey stuff. 
So was that so? Even from a kid, you were super stoked on science, and that's kind of all you wanted to do. Or? Always been a nerd. I, re- I found uh, I was digging through my mom's uh, like closet in her and this old house. We have like a hundred and twenty five year old house still out in the farm, and digging through closet, m- not knowing. I might find a body. I have no idea what's in there. <laughs> and uh, I find like the handwriting uh, paper. You know, the one that has like the two solid lines and then like the dotted line in the middle, and you like draw. Anyway, we wrote a story on that like old paper and uh how i wrote how you know how old you were when you, when uh, you wrote I, was, I was kid six i don't know five yeah. six and it was like i'm more of an inside kid than an outside kid i like <laughs> to learn things from books i like to think wow. about things um i'm not really into sports <laughs> no kidding so you well, I knew from like the jump that you were going to be just this nerd and, and doctor and whatever Kind that's of the, really cool. The route I faced. Well, that's good. I mean, that's good. It's good to you know to, to, you you had your goals from from early on. I think that's good. Oh, none of it was a goal. It just it was. It just was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> does does your family still on the farm? Yeah, yeah. They don't. They're not active, uh, but that's uh, it's still owned. Oh, that's cool. So you could probably put a development on there at least now. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? Or or just plant grass and put some cows on there. And that's. Make, Another option. Sure. <laughs> so uh, you go off to you go off to college. You knew you wanted chemistry, but you really weren't sure what you were doing after that. Yeah, that's uh, that was the the basis of it. Um, and so I got in with I mean a lot of it, I got in contact with a lot of cool people as far as the chemistry world goes. Um, Dow Chemical Company really they they offered me a scholarship that was cool. Uh-huh. I got to meet some people, some senior scientists at Dow, and then I got to. Uh, um, do all this research. I did research at North Dakota State, which is big into paints and polymers, and I think I got my name on a patent uh, during that time. I did research at Northwestern in Chicago, and then I did research at NASA, which was awesome. Mm-hmm. And uh, so all of that kind of happened. Um, I also was really interested, and they were really interested in me working at like GE, like big, big GE, like medical device kind of company, but they were going into they had the chemistry arm, and then a a guy in my college fraternity who was a few years older than me um, started a company called Chromadex. And Chromadex, um, he's a chemist. Chemist, my same school, my same fraternity. And he's like, you know, I just wanted to start my own thing. And he created assays for natural products because in pharma, it's really easy to assay the 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 drug, right? You, mm-hmm. you synthesize it, and then you do your, your gas chromatography or all your fancy instrumentation, and you know exactly what it is. But in natural products, you don't really, it's hard to identify the standardized constituent. Like St. John's wort, for example, people know that one, um, Mm. has hypericin in it. Well, how much hypericin is the right amount and how do you assay it? So he had these questions. So he created a company around it um, called Chromadex and he ended up selling it to Bayer. Well, so Frank, Frank Jacks is his name and he still runs Chromadex, but I was like, my eyes got like this big when I started listening to him. I was like, so that's like the final frontier. Like we yeah. we're go- walking into science where there hasn't been science before and making science. Oh! <laughs> awesome. So, awesome. Geared up. So, so was that sort of, you know, you started getting into, you know, presumably more natural supplements and was that sort of like the, uh, the, the doorway into, Kind of what you're doing now, or I mean, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to imagine this transition between you going from you know being raised on this G- GMO farm to you know getting get, you know getting offered scholarships from Dow Chemical to where you are now. And at some point, I have to imagine you were like, my whole life has been a lie. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was the there was at some point that's kind of where it was. I was I was working at NASA when that happened. My pivot point happened there. Um, and I was carrying this big box, not box, like a five-gallon barrel uh, with two hands mm-hmm. of these different uh, chemicals, uh, solvents, essentially. I was making a polymer. We were trying to make new materials for satellites. Mm-hmm. And so I was uh, making up stuff, cooking up stuff in the, in the kitchen, but taking the waste down to the waste room. And the waste room at in my department at NASA is as big as my clinic is now. It's just huge. It's just a giant room. And, it's just uh, all where they dump all the toxic waste stuff. Yeah, because you it, you don't just dump it. You you have to sort it first. So you don't you know whatever. It's complicated. But the fact is is that somebody comes in and tries to at best best they can minimize the effect. Mm-hmm. And so 
this is huge. It's another lab. So I'm walking into that lab, essentially, and uh, a senior scientist, senior, senior, like super scientist, like if they made a movie about what I did, which they'd never do because it'd be boring, um, <laughs> they would be in the movie. I wouldn't be. And uh, <laughs> so I, it's these double doors, like whoosh, big double doors open up. I walk in. I see her. And I don't know what went through my head, something to the effect of what the heck is she doing here? And also the effect that I was probably in my head doing some calculation scared the bejesus out of me. I dropped these solvents. They splash everywhere on me, on her, oh. on the ceiling, on the walls. Boom, like explodes. Oh. And so I'm freaked out because I just made a big mistake. I violated all sorts of policy, and I screwed up my life. <laughs> wow. I, it, it's like when they when they switch from like you know zero days since the last incident that they change that sign outside. Does your name with a plaque go on next to that sign? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and the so, guy that did it. You know, I'm, Do I'm not a allow kid. this man anywhere near the <laughs> anything. And I'm yeah. what am I? 22 years old, just a kid, and uh, working for NASA. So I think I'm big stuff. And I see yeah. like my life flash before my eyes, my career flash before my eyes. But I realize something that like I'm. If I spill this stuff on myself on a routine basis, I'm probably going to die. That mm -hmm. same week was the week that my father was diagnosed with cancer for the second time. Mm. And, like, all these things, like, crashed together, and I was like, i got to find something else to do. So I bailed on science entirely. I, I, I quit, and yeah. I went, uh, and I worked for my college fraternity for two years. I was a what they call a regional director for a while, and then I was director of health and wellness, and we did, like, leadership camps uh, across the country and I was in charge of that. What? So you were doing that at like 22, 23? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Wow, I don't want to talk about Well, you can listen to our first episode yeah. of the podcast and find we out what doing we were doing at 22 to 23, but it was uh <laughs> Yeah, no, not was, that. We weren't working at NASA. <laughs> it's I quite met a girl named NASA at a club once. It's just a little Yeah, exactly. If <laughs> probably you probably serve drinks to guys at NASA and that's probably <laughs> That's crazy. And then you wow. quit science. You went, what fraternity? It was SIGAP, the okay. nation's, it's um, currently the nation's largest fraternity. We didn't have those uh, at Western. I went to Western Illinois. Um, okay. And I think they did. I don't remember, but uh, half the fraternities matter. got kicked off campus when I was at Western. <laughs> so uh, they made a policy that they didn't, I was at Delta Chi, and they made a policy that they didn't want fraternities anymore, so they started making a ton of rules that they knew none of us would adhere to just so they could right. put everyone on suspension and kick us off campus so right. we played right into their plan good <laughs> I, 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 mean, I am curious as to how your supervisor reacted after getting ba bathed in these chem chemicals <laughs> uh, she went through all stages of the grieving process like, <laughs> she was super we do mad. a reenactment of this yeah I mean she was super mad I mean she have to imagine she's, she's a, a woman of science she's um She's like six foot three, um, slender, super smart, has kind of like fought her way through the ladders of science um, to be where she is. And I think she had all the same thoughts that, what the hell spilled on me? What am I going to do? What if I get sick because of this little stupid punk? Like huh. all of these things. And so she's, and then she's trying to be comforting because like she's a mentor of mine and, but like she's not my direct mentor. So then she could be mad again. And all of this like happened at once. Wow. So, um, I, and then I, you know, I don't really know the, I can't, I've repressed most of it, I think. I don't remember all the details of it, but it didn't go perfectly well. No. <laughs> I didn't get kicked out. I mean, honestly, they, they were, like, really good about it. They're like, this happens. It's not a big deal. Like, huh. it's just an incident, and we'll figure it out, and let's just get everybody tested and, and all this stuff and, and go through medical clearance. And so we did all that, but the point was is that my head was already out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you that would like, be kind of traumatic. I mean, I could see why you would want to get away from that whole yeah. situation at 22 and pissing off NASA. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So so it's really a good thing that that happened. I guess. Kind of, Everything's a, a good thing, right, except for when it sucks. Right, exactly. <laughs> except for, right, at, at the time. At the time. In hindsight, it was a good thing. You went and worked for the fraternity, and then how did you end up? You went to chiropractic school after that? Yeah, so my they they set all the staff up with mentors who, like, obviously were members, but they're doing stuff with their lives. And so they set me up with a, a guy who is a breast cancer oncologist in Southern California. And uh, Jay Harness is his name. And I said, Jay, I, uh, I'm tired of this like magazine knowledge. Like I would literally read like men's health to like mm -hmm. learn stuff about health. 
And I was like, this is stupid. They say That's the same where I thing. Got started. And contradictory <laughs> yeah. crap, and like it pisses me off. Like there has to be something real instead of somebody like just being so no offense, just interviewed, like an yeah. expert opinion doesn't mean much, right? Yeah. So uh, I have to learn like the basic knowledge that goes along with health. Where do I learn that? And he said... And plus you were motivated at this point because your dad was diagnosed with cancer for the second time. And so was there some motivation there to, to get some answers for that? No. No? Not at all. Oh, he, okay. I, I mean, I, it'd probably be a better story if it was like, <laughs> I'm going to cure my dad. That's, I was but, totally, yeah, yeah. That's not it at all. I, I really just wanted, I was looking at my life and, and where my life was going and that I didn't want to die when I was his age and, I, and all this other sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I just need to know what I'm going to do to take care of myself first. And um, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Do you uh, believe that his livelihood and your environment at home and the things he was exposed to contributed to that? Probably. I also don't think that we got dealt the best genetic deck because, uh, like, my grandfather died when he was 66 of a, a heart attack. He he retired at 64 and died at 66. Like, and they didn't have they didn't have the pesticides and herbicides. They didn't okay. have genetically yeah. anything. It was just a hard life, and uh, maybe we didn't have the right genes to to bear that. Gotcha. I, I got family in Western Iowa. Um, my grandma's family is all from. Western Iowa, and they have inordinate amounts of brain cancer, uh, lymphatic, like Hodgkin's disease, and um, one other type of cancer that is just, out of 50 people, there's like 20 of them that have one of those. Yeah. And uh, I'm just curious. No worries. Yeah, no, I'm not quite willing to, to think that yet, but... Uh... Maybe someday I'll try to draw some conclusions on that. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so Jay said, uh, maybe you should go to DO school. And I looked at DO school, and then I and I was like, well, why DO versus MD or something else? And he's like, you're not the right kind of thinker to be a MD. Like, you have to fall in line. You have to mm -hmm. do what they say. It's standard of care. This is the route. Like, don't question authority. He's like, you could probably fit in as a surgeon, but you kind of like talking to people and surgeons we don't talk to people so yeah, no, they're sleeping usually when you're working with yeah us. <laughs> so he just said go ahead and uh, um, DO school and I looked into DO school and I said well that's the friggin same thing as an MD um, I don't want to do that mm -hmm. I'd seen a chiropractor occasionally as a kid like once or twice I had some uh, like a abnormality in my uh, spine uh, congenital defect and so I saw a chiropractor a handful of times little headache stuff and I was like oh that'd be kind of cool I'm gonna look into that and I looked into it and I was like yeah this is neat mm -hmm. neat yeah neat so so you go to chiropractor school um, and you're you're uh, you immediately wanted to just open up your own sort of chiropractic clinic um, that's what I immediately thought now I'm gonna share something that I haven't really talked about very much um, mm -hmm. but the Sweet. fact is, is about day, I don't know, between day one and five, I was like, get me the fuck out of here. Really? Um, yeah. I mean, I'd already moved. So I moved from Richmond, Virginia, where I was living. Um, I moved into a, a, a place, and my soon-to-be wife moved in with me. We are living in Bloomington, Minnesota, where I was going to chiropractic college. I spent all this time looking at chiropractic college, and uh, they were going to I went to like all these cool science classes and they started talking to me about some of the philosophical underpinnings and how um, spinal subluxations can cure disease and I freaked out. I hated it. It didn't jive with my science brain mm -hmm. and so I was like, I need to find something else to do. And I spent the better part of that first year trying to get up, get out. Wow. But you finished, I mean, you, you finished the school. It just freaked you out in the beginning? No, I wish I would have found my way out, to be very fair. Uh, wow. I, it's not, uh, it isn't what I, I, I wanted something that was heavier handed in, in science. Um, yeah. It's it's a broad um, profession, um, which means there's just a, a, it's a high variety of individuals that enter it. Some are very science-based, mm -hmm. um, some are very academic, some are not, and some yeah. are highly ethical, and some are not, and mm -hmm. uh, I don't Frankly, I don't like being lumped in with this profession very often. I, I actually completely understand that. I mean, <clears throat> maybe it's where I live, but it's the, the higher concentration of chiropractors who are not ethical. Um, you know, it's it seems to be you know pretty pretty significant here. I, I've gone to several different chiropractors here, and and 99.9% .9 of the times I'm in and out in about three minutes. Um, 
And then a friend of mine, uh, you know, uh, I, he's a chiropractor, and I go to him. Um, I'm usually in there 30, 30 to 40 minutes. And he taught me about the Flying Nine, which uh, <laughs> I'm sure you're familiar with. Yeah. Um, which, you know, I guess works for maybe half the people, and the other half of the people, it, it maybe screws them up more. Am I, am I off base there? Yeah, well, I don't really, it doesn't affect me about, like, kind of the therapies that they use. It's mm-hmm. promises that are made that are out, outlandish and outrageous, mm-hmm. and it kind of bothers me that, uh, well, what if it doesn't work? Well, yeah. what, if I, what if I do what I'm going to do to everybody, to you, and mm-hmm. you don't get better? Well, I'll just do it again. Like, right. it, it bothers me to no end. It, yeah. it gives me an ulcer or some other negative defect. <laughs> <laughs> And so, yeah, it's tough. It's tough because it's, you know, there's no kind of, it doesn't seem to be any levels of, of you know, you, a chiropractor level, you know, ethical. It doesn't seem to be that that there. It's just you get lumped in with the other ones. Yeah, it, it does bug me. So I spent, uh, so I immediately started going to nutrition, uh, nutrition, because I found that, I found my people kind of at nutrition type conferences. Yeah. I went to a Jeff Bland um, seminar my very first weekend at chiropractic college and I went to every single one after that I just I spent way too much money and time um, I actually got some bad grades in chiropractic college because I didn't care about yeah learning that when I could learn the stuff that I wanted to so uh, huh. I immediately went as soon as I was done with chiropractic college I immediately went to grad school for nutrition and mm-hmm. uh, I have been there ever since wow that's amazing so do you you don't practice chiropractic at all just oh, I, 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 I do on, on occasion. Um, mm-hmm. Like I have, I have my chiropractic license, and I, I will see people for that. Today we see, I don't know, I think I have uh, nine people or so on the schedule this afternoon, mm-hmm. and uh, two new patients, and uh, an intern's coming in to watch, and uh, probably three or four of them will have some sort of spinal manipulation done. But it's a headache right. practice, and spinal manipulation is conducive to about 15% of migraine headaches, so it's not perfect. Huh. I've had a very mixed uh, chiropractic experience in my own life too. Not only, like you mentioned, some of the promises made in the, I've I've, I've run into some chiropractors who learned their chiropractic trade in chiropractic school, and then they've been doing that for 25 years, and they don't know anything else, and they don't do anything else, and they don't know any other manual manipulations, they don't know any other modalities, they don't work on nutrition, they don't work on lifestyle things, and then they tell people, if you come in here and I adjust you twice a month like I can fix all the things that are wrong with you so when mm-hmm. people ask my personal opinion on chiropractic you, you can't give a one sentence or one even paragraph answer at least I can't but then I know a chiropractor here in my neighborhood who knows she uses like different types of manual therapy she does chiropractic adjustments she uses moxibustion and cupping and other eastern modalities and she talks about nutrition and lifestyle and then there's ones like yourself practicing full functional medicine and like I think people get confused with these credentials and like licenses like not all chiropractors are the same or practice the same things not all naturopaths are the same or practice the mm-hmm. same things and people say like an MD can be a functional doctor an MD can be whatever they want it's right. something they went to school and got a, a letters so I yeah. think it's um, maybe we need to do a series on what the hell the letters after my practitioner's name mean <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be nothing yeah <laughs> no, the answer is nothing so. <laughs> Right, it's 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 individual how how they practice and yeah. And now you're uh, like have a gazillion. I don't know. When I found your bio page, when I first wrote your bio for something we did, I was like, where the hell do I even start with this guy? And yeah, you're in school now, right? Again, still. Yeah, I went back to to nursing school. I uh, and uh, kind of a similar. St- My mother was a hospice nurse, so I've always known about nursing. And um, the fact is, is that as I've sort of learned more about it. It's like the ultimate profession. Like Is it really? as, as a profession, like um, so. My medical, wife's a nurse. Yeah, it, physicians. Or the physis, physician model, which MDs, DOs, DCs all use in training, it's all about. It's just like target. Okay, so target, and it's like, well, what's what's the target, and how do you treat that target? Like, what's wrong, and that's it. And uh, in nursing, it's more like, okay, so who is this person? What are their circumstances? What's the situation? What's the background? And what can I like? What can I do? It has the most impact right now. And sometimes it's as little as holding the person's hand. Mm-hmm. Whereas a physician model would never allow for that because that's not going to directly impact the person's, you know, end stage nephropathy. Right. But 
what's going to impact the person most at this time. And I've watched this profession grow and develop from you know, having very little authority to now having nurse practitioners and doctors of nursing practice having all this, um, you know, latitude and can practice autonomously. And it really has grown up as a profession in the last 50 years so substantially. I'm just, I'm proud of it. And I kind of wanted to be on that kind of winning team. So I, I went really back to cool. school. And nursing school is no joke either. That's not like a, <laughs> oh. that's not like a, I'm going to go part time and learn how to, you know, saute vegetables like that's a um <laughs> no, that could be hard too but uh, <laughs> no, my program is not a, a small program my program is specifically for foreign educated physicians and they open it up to chiropractors who have certain credentials and so I'm going to through nursing school with you know gastroenterologist from Dominican Republic and uh, a plastic surgeon from Argentina and an internal medicine doc from Iran mm. and like it's it's super cool and we're all just getting our Butts kicked because it's because nursing's hard. It's wow. hard. Wow. So yeah, I mean, it's uh, I haven't I haven't really heard it put that way before. It's really really incredibly fascinating. Um, w so what's your plan with that? What do you what do you, you what are you gonna do once you uh, graduate that uh, nursing school? I have no idea. I don't ever have a plan. Really? He's probably gonna enroll in another educational program. I would yeah, actually be exactly. willing to wager on that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and, I, or had another organization, or uh, uh, we'll we'll see. I mean, everything is a, a little bit up in the air right now as far as where uh, where I want where I want to do and what I I like what I'm doing as far as the nutraceutical industry, mm -hmm. and I think I get a lot of uh, I don't know self uh, I don't know it it feels good. <laughs> to yeah, know that no, it, it's, and it's so I, I like that. It's a good. It's, Experience, good opportunity. I'm, I'm, I, I'm a young, relatively young guy, and the, you know, highest-ranking medical officer in this large company, and so that's cool too. And all the things that sort of give yourself good kudos uh, at night. But um, so I like that, and um, I find it interesting and challenging, and all that stuff. So this is sort of the the practicing part is important to me because I don't lose touch with that that humanness and how mm -hmm. people suffer and struggle, and ultimately that's why I do what I do. Um, even in the nutrition industry side, but uh, so I don't want to lose touch of that. But right yeah. now, that's the focus. Yeah, ultimately, you're you're what really drives you is actually getting to work with people and helping people. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. Wow, that's heavy. <laughs> that's like a lot of stuff. You know what it is though? It's like I can relate to like your. I don't know. I, my, I've done seven different things in the last eight years. Like, I thought my career was going to go this way, then it went that way, then it went this way, and then it went mm -hmm. this way. And what I'm trying to do is learn how to have that awareness of, like, this way feels right and go this way and yeah. trust that and, and be okay with it versus, like, oh, man, there's this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing. And it's like, well, which one, which one would I be doing if I got to choose and it didn't matter what I was doing? And then trying to trust that and go with it and um, I can see that like you, you know you you feel strongly about nursing you're like screw it I'll go back to nursing school what are you gonna do with that I don't know something will come up like something will happen yeah. that you'll use that for and then you'll do it and uh, it's cool to see and your broad educational basis from you know going for the science in college and working that route and working for science, I guess I'll call it, and then chiropractic school, and then all the nutritional training and nursing, like, I haven't come across very many people that have that broad of a scope, you know, and uh, it's it's cool, it, it's very versatile and gives you, uh, like, you're one of the guys I know I can, or women, that, that I can ask a question to regardless of the topic and you know something about it and it's yeah. uh, it's uh, like a renaissance type situation. What do you think it is that, that drives you to, to continue to, to want to learn and continue to want to reach out to people and, and to uh, to help people? I think that's a, a great profound question and uh, I kind of spend some time on that pretty frequently. Um, I, my initial thought and the, probably the best soundbite thought of it is like I, I can't stand people see people suffering the way they do um, and not find answers and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I think it's more primal than that. I think that I am – people oversimplify things that are complex and they over 
complicate things that are simple. And mm -hmm. I think that there is context that's lost in our current society. And I just, I'm like searching for the truth. And that sounds super cliche, but mm -hmm. I think that's right. I think it is like, I need to know what's real versus am I getting just snowballed on some of this stuff um, just to know for myself. So unfortunately or fortunately, I've dedicated my whole life to just figuring that out. Do you still feel like there's some, it sounds like almost, it, as educated as you are, and all of these things that you've you've learned, almost an, a sense of uncertainty? Oh, yeah. I think that we don't know much. I think yeah. that we've, we've studied things in the wrong models. We've, we've paid attention to what evidence is out there in a weird way. Um, I, I think we've spent a, we've, We've followed red herrings in science and medicine for so long that we don't even know where to look anymore. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, dis I'm to some degree I'm disheartened uh, that we that I probably won't find some of the truths that I'm after. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other hand, maybe you know, maybe at the end of my life we'll have figured some models out. And frankly, I think the the bioinformatics models and the the big data movements are probably where we're going to be able to see it because you can kind of cross your eyes, hallucinate, squint, and and see patterns that we haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. um, but it's all based on some of it's based on junk data in. So I'm not sure. I'm not yeah, sure. if the data is not good, then the outcome isn't going to be good. Yeah, some of it's based on like how people were you know, diagnosed in the hospital. Well, crap, I know as good as anybody that I, I diagnose somebody based on the, uh, the compensation model rather than what they actually had in a, lot of, in a lot of cases. If I have three choices and they all are pretty much accurate, I'm going to code for the one that pays the most. Huh. Wow. That's crazy. Uh, I mean, even with some of the, the, the studies on, on food where the, the participants have to fill out these forms and try and remember what they what they ate three months ago. It's like the, the data is faulty to begin with, so of course the, the results are going to be skewed. Yeah. I teach a, a nutritional assessment course for, for master's students, and they are, like, I, it's like, well, how do, you, how do you know if somebody's eating the right thing or not? And that answer is not, we don't know. And yeah. so we go through food frequency questionnaires and food diaries and all these different tools that have been developed, and they all suck. Mm -hmm. they, they all do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is you think that, is there something in particular, something very specific that you're hoping to find the answer to? Not yet. I'm searching for what that something is. To be very fair. Wow, wow. Really interesting journey you're on. <laughs> yeah, I think I just posted about something that uh, that drama mean doesn't fix uh, emotional roller coasters. Um, <laughs> I think I'm on one right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish that was true. <laughs> No, it's cool though, man. We we like these podcasts. They like people that you've come out and whiskey doesn't like, fix their emotional. <laughs> whiskey, in case yeah. you're wondering, has that been properly <laughs> tested? Um, the, but the uh, you've come out, I think, three times with us maybe, and talked male hormones twice, and I think we did one other subject possibly. But we have people on, and you, you come on, you talk about hormones, or somebody comes on like last night, Kelly, she talked about depression or whatever, and. Um, I think it's just really cool to have these conversations, and I'm so proud of the 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 people we have around us, and the circles that we run in, and the people who we get to work with, and collaborate with, and call friends and colleagues, and introduce our audience to, and the and the work that everybody's doing, and what they're trying to accomplish, and change, and find answers to, and whatever. And I think a lot of the public and the and the consumers in this industry, and the people who you know buy the eBooks and the online programs and the stuff like. They only see the forward-facing results of some of these things. They don't mm -hmm. know the people behind it that we get to know, and they don't see the journeys and see the stories and see the motivating driving factors and the challenges. And like, you're going to nursing school. Why? Because. Yeah. <laughs> they don't hear answers like that. Like I, you know. And it's um, we're really enjoying this podcast experience of being able to like show that to people so they can see. I mean, this is a cool industry to be part of at this current time, I mm -hmm. think. Uh, there's a lot of shifts happening due to people like yourself, and um, it's just, it's fun. It's awesome. Yeah, good stuff. Um, before we go, let, uh, just where's the best place for people to find you online? I think the best place is either uh, metabolictreatmentcenter.com if you like the web or if you're 
into Facebook. Uh, you can just find search for Corey Schuler, and uh, we'll be we'll be there too. I try to post relatively interesting stuff. Mostly, it's just stuff that I'm entertained by. But uh, mm -hmm. that's a good way to keep tabs on me. <laughs> What's next for you? What's right next for me? Uh, I think I have a, an exam or something next. No. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I know you don't like to plan things out, but you know, I mean, uh, what do you? Yeah, what do you I, know? I have a project that's under wraps right now that okay. I think will, will change the game for a lot of people, um, and it's not as big as what you guys are doing, but I think it's uh, it's really specific in to help people bring context to what they've heard is good or heard is mm -hmm. bad for them. Great. We would okay. love to spread the word on that when it's ready to be out from under wraps. Okay. For and, now, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an awesome, ambiguous mystery. That, uh, yes, the <laughs> mysterious, <laughs> world-changing pro uh, project of Dr. Corey Schuler. Um, also, we're going to be featuring uh, Dr. Schuler on our site. Probably by the time this is released, if you're listening to this, you can go to the professional services area on our website, and he'll have a profile there. Uh, you can fill out a questionnaire there that answers some questions about yourself and what you're looking to work on with your health. And we're matching people up with awesome doctors and practitioners that we feel would be a good fit for them that could help you and or help them help you. So he'll be on there too if you want to check out, um, find him that way also. Good that doesn't exist right now, but it'll exist when you're listening to this. So it's kind of like time travel. Ooh. <laughs> 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 uh, that's the next thing you're going to be researching, right, Corey? He did work for NASA. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so are there yeah, aliens? There anything, anything freaky in NASA that that uh, maybe? Yeah. Could about? I mean, aliens. Are there, oh, yeah, are there really aliens? Uh, yeah, I have no idea. The uh, uh -huh. I, I I hope I wish the uh, <laughs> the I was we were on a base that was shared with the Air Force, and so like the coolest thing is that the F twenty two Raptor was there, and and the thing is that it if without its computer it can't fly, like it's aerodynamically stupid. So they had wind tunnels, and uh, my girlfriend at the time was working on um like yeah, the this like this dream this huge, huge uh, aircraft that, and her job was to figure out, like, how many, uh, like, if you could drop a hammer on the top of it, like, will it get damaged? Okay, what if it's a bigger hammer? What if it's a bigger hammer? What if it, and, uh, like, at what point will it be too much damage for the thing to fly? Um, but, you know, we didn't, we, they didn't let us know anything. But I'm pretty sure there's aliens, or some contact, there's some technology that hasn't been explained, and I watched it. It's confirmed. It's confirmed. It's a lot of you know, <laughs> We just did it. Let's get this on CNN. Oh, the big hair guy is awesome. We should get him on the podcast. All right. I can text him. No. Oh, cool. <laughs> awesome. Uh, cool. I don't know where. I think we're done now. I think we're good. <laughs> All right. Yeah, see, I, we told you before we went on air, these go in an interesting direction. So, um, yep. We, got we really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for, for everything that you're doing and for all the you know, help you give to us and for what you share with the world and your your ambiguous mission of global healing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a is that website taken? I don't know. But oh right speaking now. of websites, dot ninja is now a thing and we yes. discovered that yesterday. We got depression dot ninja to direct people to Kelly's uh, book and dot ninja is now a thing that you can buy for domains just so yeah. you know we're only letting certain people know this so yeah i spent Great. i spent a couple of hours on godata yesterday probably spending too much money on dot ninja domains <laughs> i don't know what i'm going to do with them but <laughs> awesome thanks so much Corey. all right take care guys bye bye all right, there you go. Dr. Corey Schuler, uh, probably one of the most motivated and driven uh, people uh, I've ever met. <laughs> really good guy. Always a pleasure to speak with him. Always a fascinating conversation. You can find him again at metabolictreatmentcenter.com. And don't forget to find us at rebelhealthtribe.com. That's all for now. We'll talk to you soon.